Hey everybody, as AI art progresses and we're all getting a little more imaginative and learning not to spray and pray prompts to try and get the image we want, a lot of people are also getting interested in what prompt did you use to make that? Uh, so obviously some people are holding this close to the vest because they've got their little secret sauce and they don't want the world to know about it. But there's a tool that's out there now uh, called the Prompt Interrogator that will actually give you some big hints as to what prompts may have been used. Now, it's not going to give you the verbatim text that was used by the person who originally created the image, but it will give you some big hints as to direction you can go. More importantly, if it's wrong, it can give us some directions to things that we maybe hadn't thought of. So it's saying to get to this image, these are the prompts I would have used, not necessarily the prompts that were used. So it may guess right, it may guess wrong. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to use that notebook real quick, and then we're going to load an image in, and I'm not going to tell you what the prompt is, but I'm going to see what it thinks the prompt is, and then I'll tell you if it was right or wrong. Uh, so I think you get it, the idea. It's a fantastic tool for you to learn to prompt better, not so much to take and reverse engineer someone else's work. Although, I mean, that's what we're doing here. Uh, that's why all this stuff is open source right now, is so that we can actually learn from each other and become better artists through it. It's also the reason why I Photoshop all over the top of my art when I'm done with it, because I want it to also be mine. All right. So how we're going to use this thing is we're actually going to do two different things. We're going to run this Colab notebook, uh, which is a website that you go to. It's a card of Google. Uh, and you're basically attaching to a machine that's up in the cloud and you're going to run this there. So you don't have to worry about your uh, machine locally being a laptop or some horrible potato. This will give you the opportunity to run something uh, that's bigger than you can normally handle. Uh, we're also going to use Discord for this. Um, obviously enough, we use Discord to talk to a lot of these bots, but Discord is actually a really easy way to get our images into this system. So let's start with the notebook. Uh, if you haven't used a Colab notebook before, you basically are just going to go through and check all these play buttons. Now I've already used this before, so they're already loaded, but you're basically just going to click the checkbox and it's going to, or click the play button. It's going to go ahead and turn into a checkbox. And then we're going to get down to a part where it says, um, what do we want to interrogate? This is where we're going to use Discord to do this. So if we bring up Discord, my wife and I were working on some book covers that the current AI challenge is children's book cover, uh, which I'm not motivated by it all. And so she had some ideas. So she actually had a lot of fun playing with it. And we came up with some really kooky ideas and um, it was really neat. Uh, she loved it. She laughed a lot. So I think I actually might get her on here at some point because she was really fun for this. Uh, but I want to do is I'm going to take one of my images from uh, these are all stable diffusion images that I've generated. I'm going to take one of these and drag it into Discord to talk directly to the Discord bot. Now I'm talking the mid journey bot, obviously enough. Uh, the mid journey bot's not going to know what to do with this, but it's still private to me. Um, so I don't really have to worry about it being out in public if I'm trying to do this. But why we did this is we can go and we can right click on the image now and choose a copy link. So now I'm going to go back to the Colab notebook here. I can replace this link with the link to my image. Now when I click interrogate here, now we got to run this whole notebook here. When I click interrogate, now it's going to go ahead and use that image as a point of departure. So it's going to go, and depending on the models that I have checked here, um, it's going to give us a different result. So these models are not all going to agree with each other, which is okay because it's going to give us variety. Uh, you know, if you're looking for something, it's going to give you the verbatim prompt that was used. I don't think that creature is ever going to exist uh, because it's not stored in the metadata here at all. Uh, it's something that was done online by something that was trained in a way that nobody knows. Uh, so this is actually going to produce something different probably. And down here we see the answer. So we scroll to the bottom, we can see our answer. So I'm going to click on this little uh, magic wand here, which will make this now uh, full screen for uh, the answers. So here are our answers. We have, depending on, again, the model that was used, we have a digital painting, an airbrush painting, or a photorealistic painting. It was actually a digital painting is one of the ones I used there. The, arch uh, the artist, Marco Mazzoni, um, it was actually Marco Mazzoni. So we're good there, but uh, it's interesting is I wonder who this is. So um, if run this before and I've come up with artists that would be like 40 or 50% guesses that I had never heard of before, and then I've done a little research and say, well, what is this person? What are they kind of they what kind of art do they create? And I've been really pleasantly surprised. So it's a great way to research. Um, trending, uh, this is the, so it's obviously something trending on or whatever. I actually didn't use this at all. Uh, same with movement. I did not put a movement. And as far as flavors go, um, I didn't put one either. So this prompt was very small. It was beautiful woman, and it was by. Marco Mazzoni. And all I did was that simple phrase. And I let it 
generate many instances. In each instance, I got a lot of really great imagery. And you can see here, these are not all Marco Mazzoni, but you can tell the few that are. Um, I think that sometimes people overprompt and you're trying to drive something that's in your head, which is great. Uh, but sometimes if you're just looking for a point of inspiration, letting the bot kind of do the work and give you some inspiration freely uh, is great. Now the CFG scale, which is kind of the, how much it's supposed to obey what you're doing uh, in um, mid journey. It's also the chaos scale. I guess it's kind of the closest equivalent um, was a six. Uh, so if you're stable diffusion user, that's pretty low. So it was able to kind of say, yeah, I see what you're doing, but uh, I'm going to kind of go this way. I can also put that as a negative number too, by the way, which I just found out, which was pretty weird. I put in a beautiful woman and I got a picture of a back porch. So that didn't work out real well, but I guess that's what I was asking for. Anyway, so I thought this was really interesting. Use this as a point of learning, right? What prompts you may be able to use in the future and places to start, but learning new artists or new trends or new ways to state a phrase in a way that can give you a better answer. So I thought this was really helpful. Um, everybody take care, stay safe, and a great weekend.